Hey everyone, it's Rob from Hypop and welcome back to another video. In this one, we're taking you along with us on one of our shoots so we can show you the process on how we take editorial style shots with a model and some of our styling props. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this. Hit the notification bell to be updated of any new content we release. Leave a like on the video if it's helped you. Feel free to leave down in the comment section below your thoughts or if you have any questions about editorial style shots with models and styling props. Follow us on social media at Hypop and visit our website, hypop.com.au. Let's get into it. That's what we'll be using to shoot. And we have a fortune cookie paper backdrop, also Spectrum as well. I really wanted a soft fruity look for this entire shoot, which is why I went for light with a modifier. I wanted to use the paper roll as a makeshift wall, so I left it curled. The ground is a really nice dark wood, which contrasts well with the paper roll. The curl of the paper roll highlights the texture of the ground. Hello everyone, this is Zara, our model today. And we are shooting with the Spectrum S-Beam. So we're just changing the lighting setup, just so it's a little bit uh, brighter. So we'll plug in this guy. I got Zara to sit down on the ground so we could get more of a relaxed pose. It feels more natural if you prompt your model rather than referring to exact references. We added in some flower props here to get that cool blurred out of focus look. These were definitely my favourite shots from the entire shoot. We're using the actual studio space, so We've got the two S-beams set up here. We'll probably have the model like posing against the wall here. The styling is very like soft and very like neutral. These S-beams, they come with this soft box diffuser. So it's really good for like um, having just a continuous light, which is just soft. And these are really easy to use because you don't need a trigger or anything. So I would probably really recommend them if you're new to using lighting. The studio has lovely brick walls which I wanted to feature as well. I found shooting with this brick wall as a challenge to be honest, as I like my backgrounds to be a solid colour block. I decided to edit it to be black and white and less contrasty so it suited the soft neutral vibe I was going for. So this is moving on to our next set. Because of the light coming through the window, it creates this really cool like shard here. So we just moved the muslin forward to get that. We're gonna put the S-beam on this side just so we can actually put some fill light on her so it's not completely like dark on her face there. Heads up, if you're going to do a fruity scene like this, definitely cut up all your fruit beforehand, as it is quite time consuming. So it's still very soft because all the elements in like the styling, the backdrop and like the fruits is still soft, but like the light change. That's how like lighting affects kind of the way the mood is in an editorial.
This setup was perfect for simple skincare shots. Two S-beam lights pointing towards the model with an assistant holding a reflector with white bounce. I'm using a macro lens to get those really close-up skincare shots. I really love the way these photos came out. Hello, so um, the model has left now. So we are shooting some extra shots that we can include in our end result. Having a mixture of model photos, just the product in the model's hand against the backdrop, and then like a few more just like product photos can work together really well. So we are going to style this scene. Why are we using fruit? Uh, so I think fruit has been like pretty trendy to be using in studio. So obviously we really like to try the trends out and I think this trend's pretty fun. You get a lot of texture, a lot of colour and obviously pairing them with like neutral like styling props like this really like add to the scene. Now we have a flower holder. So he's holding the flower there just so we can get some cool shots of a floating flower. So we have a nice wide shot of the scene. Bit bored of this, so we're gonna add different kind of shapes in there. This one might look quite nice because I think all the fruits are quite like round. So like adding some round kind of shapes might make it a bit interesting. These are the like cylindrical ones here. So we've got here um, an acrylic round. So this is really cute because you can actually put the actual product on it and you can actually just like style that like, I like putting it like against things. So I like stacking that like nicely on the side and then we can just put in our product. Shooting with natural light is really lovely, but obviously sometimes there's just not enough light in some spaces. So we've got two of our Spectrum S-beam lights here. So we're gonna show you what it looks like with one light on versus having two lights on. So this is just natural lighting. I'll take a photo like this. So in this instance, it's, it's really beautiful, the natural light, the way it comes through. But I think it always looks a little bit nicer when it's actually filled from the front. We're gonna turn on one light first. So we're gonna pump this to 100. So that's at 100. So obviously this, you could stop at this if this is kind of the vibe you're going for. So this has a really nice kind of window light effect coming through. Now I'm gonna turn on the second light and you're gonna be able to see the shadows on the left side are gonna get filled in. And I'm going to move it to 100. So as you can see, it's a lot flatter, uh, not as kind of like dimensional as just having one light, but again, it's up to what you want. Some brands really suit a really nice flat lighting style and some really like that nice natural. I think for skincare and beauty stuff, I think it's always nice to just have one. I think that's really pretty. So yeah, these lights come in a kit. You can either just get one if that's all you need or you can get them in a the set. This is what natural lighting looks like. And then this is obviously what it looks like with fill light from the front. Nice. Very nice, very pretty. So it's better to shoot more. So during the edit process, you have a lot more options to choose from. Um, so in this instance, I'm just gonna shoot the fruit as is cause I think it's really pretty seen. So obviously just no product or anything, just the fruit themselves. That way I can actually think about maybe having this shot with maybe a photo of the model. Um, but obviously we'll document the editing process. So you'll be able to see like what decisions we make. So keep watching. I am no graphic designer at all, but mock-ups are always fun to make for kind of portfolio examples. So as you can see, I've just made this mock-up logo. It's called Just Skin and I'm just playing around with kind of the sizing of this logo with the images as well. As I mentioned during the shoot, it's always better to shoot more than to shoot less. Um, or then you just feel like you don't have enough options in the editing process. It's just better for your sake to just shoot way more and then obviously not use as much. 
As you can see here, we shot a lot during the shoot, but my mock-up here is only using about five images. So I'm just mocking up kind of product images, kind of images with the model as well. So just having a nice like collation of different types of images during the shoot. So is there a lot of trial and error involved in the editing process? Personally, yes. I think everyone has a lot of trial and error. The best way to know whether something works is to just put it together. And you can see there are some things that I tried during this editing part that I didn't really end up liking. So I just either simplified it or I just tried something else. I mentioned before that I got a lot of inspiration for this shoot from Pinterest and Instagram. At the end of the day, I think Pinterest is a great resource. If you're looking at Pinterest inspiration all the time, it gets really hard to kind of come up with original ideas. You'll feel like if you're just copying a reference, it just feels like a blatant copy. So I think the best way to do the brainstorming process when it comes to any creative project is to use Pinterest as a resource, but I think at the end of the day, just go back to an original brief. Just really simplify what you're working with. Yeah, so like Juliet said, I think Pinterest is a really good reference, but when it comes to shooting, especially when you're editing in the post shoot process, uh, I think that creative intuition is really important and trusting your own creative intuition is really important because if you really need inspiration, it's good to look back on your own work and think about how you personally interpret the brief and how you shoot and what suits yourself stylistically. Um, because if you're getting too caught up in other references, it's really hard to make things your own. And I guess that's really important, especially if you've been sourced out by a client. They want your work and your vision. So yeah, just really trust yourself. And it is a lot of trial and error and that's normal and that's usually how you get the best results as well. So we had a little bit of extra time at the end of the shoot. As you can see, the studio we were using has these really nice shards of light that just come through the window. If you're working in a studio, but you wanna work with a specific texture, I think the safest option is to bring it along. So as you can see, we have these flat lay backdrops. I also wanted to just use the S-beam to shoot really like flat studio images. Thanks for watching. A special thank you to Daniel from Innkeeper Studios. If you're based in Sydney, Australia, we definitely recommend to check out his brand new studio based here in St. Peter's. For more videos just like this, please feel free to leave down in the comment section below your thoughts. If you like this series, please let us know because it's something that we're changing up a little bit for you guys to get more of an insight on our process and how we go through our usual shoots, photo shoots just like this. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Hypop and visit our website hypop.com.au. Thanks for watching.